Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the daily chart of Pan American Silver Corporation. And uh, I'm going to show this chart, uh, do some comparisons with silver, and, and show the first majestic uh, stock chart as well. Now, most of you know that I have never uh, recommended or believed in uh, mining shares and uh, I've made the reason very clear that it's foolish to invest in a commodity or a product that there's an official or unofficial government policy of suppressing the price. That's a recipe for bankruptcy. Nevertheless, uh, if the suppression ends and you're in a company that is producing that, then obviously there's going to be uh, kind of a uh, home run situation. Now, what has given me pause here of late is that uh, this chart and First Majestic we're going to look at in a second here uh, had did not pause. And we're going to look at the rally in silver today, but you can see the rally in this stock. It had about $11 or so as kind of a uh, rounding off point uh, I'll draw the lines in here, or an arrow. You can see that it was kind of rounding off with silver and then just an explosive move actually three days ago uh, before silver took off. What does this mean? Well, this could be very important. You can see we basically got, we've got more than a double here from the bottom. And that's right in uh, mid-January. We're talking about roughly 5.35 for Pan American Silver, dollars a share. And uh, I'll, I'll go further out in the chart because this one goes back. Uh, First Majestic doesn't go that far back, but you can see 12.66, that's the close today. That's 100, uh, what, 150% gain. So let's go back and look at the weekly chart. Uh, so you can see here, nothing really rivaling this, maybe this move right here. Uh, the question is, is this going to continue, but is this going to be something like what we had back in 2009? It's starting to look like that. So let's pull up the first majestic silver chart. And you can see a similar sort of pattern. So the weekly doesn't give us a lot here because this company hasn't been around that long. But if we look at the daily... You can see very clearly here that uh, we have a move from roughly $2.40 in mid-January to 7.5. So that's actually a 300% return on that stock. And the move today is phenomenal. You can see it moved from 7. It went all the way to 7.5. What is that? Um, an 8% gain, something like that. So let's put the silver chart over the top of it and try to get an idea of how big of a move this is relatively to the price of silver. So here's the overlay. It's not exact, but it, it's close. And you can see that. You can see that as far as um, the last three years or so, we're talking from May of 2012 to the present time, uh, this is a unprecedented divergence. You can see that the divergence occurred when the stock rallied past silver and then kind of started to fall off with silver. But then today you can see that breakout and silver lagging it very seriously. Uh, where do we have a precedent for that? Maybe back in here. So uh, Let's pull up uh, the Pan American Silver chart again, and we'll put that as a cross uh, from, we'll put that up with a cross on silver because uh, this chart actually goes back uh, and we can get some historical information. You can see the first thing you want to note here is the, the tremendous crash that we had in uh, silver after the May smackdown actually surpassed, you can see the difference here from high to low, surpassed the Bear Stearns situation. I'm sorry, that's not the Bear Stearns situation. This is the Bear Stearns situation, but it surpassed the previous situation in 2004, this this market break. 
Um, and then, of course, we had the close one here in 2011 that that did eventually surpass it and come down here to a new low. Now, how big of a move is this relatively? Well, it's starting to look like something on the order of what we had in the past. But let's pull up a silver overlay so we can see what this is relative to the price of silver. So here's the overlay here. Uh, it, it's not accurate uh, because it's uh, going back too far. So let's put it on the daily and then we'll go back to the weekly. So you can see on the daily uh, just a tremendous move. It, it, right now, if we're just doing a, a raw comparison, uh, the the share price of Pan American Silver is trading at a $22.50 silver price. Uh, out on the weekly, um, it's still around that $14 price. So I want to pull up silver here and do a comparison to gold. And the reason why is I want to show you what the relative prices are for silver and gold and how much things need to catch up if this is really uh, sort of a bottoming situation and and these stocks are starting to indicate that so we'll start off with the the most uh, the, the longest period of time here and I'm just gonna point out the prices here so based on this comparison which goes all the way back to 1995 if silver had performed as well as gold during this bull market uh, which actually they're both in let's uh, Let's put lines in to show you here that silver is actually still in a bull market. So you can see we can draw right from that low to this low in 2008 and to the current low. And you can see it's a bull market. Uh, it's nothing like the gold bull market, uh, but it is still a bull market. So on the, on the monthly chart, you can see that the equivalent price of silver is going to be about 33 bucks. Um, back on the weekly chart, we're talking about $32 silver if uh, silver just catches gold. And uh, when we listen to some of these interviews here, we're going to see that it's probably going to surpass it. On the daily chart, uh, we're talking about, about a $20 silver price for silver to catch up with gold and you can see here a very similar situation that we have with the the stocks the first majestic and uh, the Panama Panama American silver you can see this big divergence nothing like we've seen of late so what does this all mean well it it may mean that the the whole thing is starting to end now we've looked at the long-term silver chart and let's pull this up uh, with the monthly chart and the volume and the uh, MACD indicator and you can see here first of all the volume increase is phenomenal it's like nothing we've ever seen it's on a steady rise it's going to be very important for this volume to be subsumed under a new high price. Uh, this volume came in around a $16 price and around a $15 price. A move up in here is going to make all of this volume buying volume. That's very important. But you can see this major spike is as we're rising. Now the other thing is this MACD, it's way, way below the zero line, but it has crossed and it is rising. So if you look historically here at the last bull move we had, we had the cross back in 2009 in the spring, but uh, it went for a good uh, year, year and a half until it really got that major breakout move. Uh, and that was when it separated and started rising rapidly. We're starting to see that here with the MACD and we're still below the zero line. Now, how far will we go as far as a swing move? I just want to do one more thing here on a gold comparison chart. So if we put up a gold comparison chart, uh, gold versus silver for this 
period. The question is, is if we make a move similar to the move that we made uh, the last time we had this situation arise, you can see that we're talking about a, about $18 on the equivalent chart here. We'll just put the arrows in. Around $18 there with about $8, maybe it's about 50% uh, of the price or 100%. You can see here $15, $30, so same thing. So uh, based on this, what would the projection be of where we're going to go if this sort of scenario repeated? Well, the difference here, let's just go based upon dollars. You can see the difference here uh, with that 100% difference between the $15 price and the $750 or $8 price. We'll just say $8 is a round number. Where did it go? Well, it went sixfold from there. Uh, it went from it went to about $48. Uh, so it went about six times this difference. What is this difference here? Well, I already said it's about $15. We'll just use that as a round figure. Uh, 6 times 15 is what? Uh, that's 60 bucks, and then uh, times 5 is $90. So a $90 move from here, if this pattern is repeated, that's going to give us $100 silver. Now that's a prediction that a lot of people have made, and I'm going to play a little bit of the Bill Murphy interview uh, and uh, I'm going to play a little bit of the Andy Hoffman interview. Before I do that, I want to talk about this article from uh, Martin Armstrong. And uh, this is a very, very interesting take here. Uh, new bill to outlaw encryption. And we're starting to see this. If you follow the Apple I, uh, iPhone story, I didn't follow it that closely. Uh, I'm a person who deals with encryption on an everyday basis, being a network engineer and somebody who deals with VPNs and encrypted tunnels and stuff like that. And so this kind of thing is, for me, it's like second nature. It's very, very simple. Uh, an encrypted tunnel is simply a tunnel across the internet that can't be broken into. So that's not a complex thing. Uh, we know that the NSA already communicates over encrypted tunnels over the open internet. And it's not something that is, uh, you know, mysterious or anything. It's an unbreakable tunnel. We have unbreakable tunnels and we have unbreakable uh, data files. And that's what happened with the iPhone. But you can see here that the legislatures are actually talking about outlawing encryption. Now, that's really stupid. Uh, it's kind of like trying to outlaw math. Um, it can never succeed or passing a law against passwords so uh, the people in government, these people are absolute morons. They, they don't understand anything. But uh, the tide is going against them. Things are getting away from them. And you can see here in Armstrong's commentary that Obama kind of hinted at the, the trouble they're in. And I'll read this. Those in power are simply liars. Why we elect such people is beyond me. We cannot afford career politicians because they always create a divide between themselves and the people. No republic has ever resisted converting into an oligarchy. It just does not work. I reported that Obama slipped and actually said the truth by mistake. In the case against Apple, he said that if government could not break into phones, then every American had the equivalent of a Swiss bank account on their phone. This is not about terrorism. It's about the hunt for money and their mismanagement of the economy. Here is a proposed bill to outlaw encryption, encryption bill discussion draft. While this is still in draft version, it demonstrates that it is them against us. Passage of this bill will destroy the world economy because of their greed. Outlawing encryption will end the ability to make secure payments online as hackers can gain access to anything that the government can. And that's a very good argument. Uh, if you trust the government, then obviously you trust hackers because hackers have already hacked everything the government has. So here's an example where Obama spilled the truth. Um, I, I don't know what the significance of that is. Um, anybody who knows anything about encryption knows that it is not something they can change or defeat. When I did my first Bitcoin videos, I talked about how Bitcoin 
is the equivalent of the Gutenberg press. It's not something that the powers can change. It's a change in technology. It's a change in knowledge. It's not something they can oppose. Even if they outlawed it, it would still exist, uh, just like black markets. Uh, so there's really nothing they can do about it. Now, what I want to talk about is the Obama meeting that we had here. And I'm going to look at this Zero Hedger article. We don't have a lot of information, but it's interesting that this Obama meeting with Janet Yellen actually happened at the same time we had this uh, kind of out of the blue silver rally. And as I showed you on the the stock charts, um, this rally that we had was... Uh, kind of unprecedented it, it's uh it just came out of the blue but it actually coincided with this meeting and this was a, an emergency meeting that was called uh between obama and yellen and i'll read this the closed door meeting between obama biden and yellen has concluded and moments ago the white house released the following statement quote the president and chair yellen met this afternoon in the oval office as part of an ongoing dialogue on the state of the economy, they discussed both the near and long-term growth outlook, the state of the labor market, inequality, and potential risks to the economy, both in the United States and globally. They also discussed the significant progress that has been made through continued implementation of Wall Street reform to strengthen our financial system and protect consumers. Wow, that is laughable. Of course, for the actual transcript of what was said, we'll have to rely on some conscientious White House leaker putting it on BitTorrent, but here's our modest attempt at translating what was and what was not said. No market crash is allowed until November. That's a pretty good take. Uh, now, the commenters have speculated, is Yellen giving Obama orders? Is Obama giving Yellen orders? I, I tend to side with the latter. I think that uh, I've covered before the presidential cycle uh, that uh, the stock market is not allowed to crash. Uh, during a president's term where the president can be blamed for it. Obama seems to be more conscientious about that, I'll say, than the last two presidents that we had in eight-year terms. So you can see that a lot of the crash predictions, the Shemitah predictions, were coming true right there at the beginning of the year, and then we had a furious Fed-induced rally. Uh, a propping up of the stock market. And uh, that's, in my mind, clearly what happened. So Obama's telling us that uh, it, anybody who says the economy is weak or is in bad shape is peddling fiction. And uh, with this meeting, we really have to wonder who indeed is peddling fiction. Now let's listen to this uh, Andy Hoffman interview and uh, then we're going to listen to an uh, interview with uh, Gata. Meaning they are more terrified than ever because they know they're losing control. I mean, look at the Federal Reserve. They're trying to talk about a recovery, and they're going to raise rates four times. And meanwhile, last month, uh, not even last month, they put out this ridiculously dovish statement because things are so bad. And what has happened since? Well, at the time that they did that, they were expecting 2.5% GDP growth in the first quarter. As of yesterday, and this is only 10 days later, it's only a half a percent. Things are getting much worse. And guess what? Now the commodity, the greatest commodity short squeeze of all time, is rolling over. They've covered their shorts, and now all the commodities are plunging again. So we're going to be back into the abyss soon. So what are they doing? They're doubling up, tripling up, quadrupling up their, their efforts to support the stock market and cap gold. And, you know, I don't really care if they're able to cap the, to support the stock market because it won't matter. The only way they'll be able to do it is, uh, is by hyperinflating it. But as for gold and silver, physical markets behind it. And that's why I'm more confident than ever that they will lose just as they were losing earlier this year. And just as they were losing, for instance, in that, that about the COTs, does anyone who gets all excited about these, these shorts and the COMEX thinking there's going to be a crash, does anyone remember 2008, uh, 2010 and 11? when they also went to a nearly record level of shorts and then the price of solar went to $50 an ounce. I mean, these things are going to happen and, and, and in spades as the reality of the physical market overcomes the fraud, fraud of the paper market as it always has throughout history. And now, that's the big question. Is that actually happening now? 
Now, I wanted to play a snippet of this interview with Bill Murphy from GATA as to whether or not there is actually any of these precious metals left in the United States. And I tend to side with Bill Murphy. I think that probably through legal chicanery, uh, the gold is gone. And I think we saw that when we saw Germany making a request and being denied. But uh, this is a Bill Murphy talking about how uh, the Fed head, uh, Bill Dudley, was questioned about whether or not they'd leased out the gold. Let's listen to this. Well, the, the, the one thing that just happened the other day, which I mentioned, as you know, and, and then Chris Bell put, just put out, that one of our veteran cafe members and, and followers, a guy named Ware Smith, uh, who I've known for years and a very, very smart man, and, and he went to VMI and, and he asked me, I had to a question to ask uh, Bill Dudley, who's the head of the New York Fed, who was speaking about, you know, but to ask him, I said, well, you know, I asked him about if the United States is, you know, you know, loan gold or swap gold with any other countries and, and uh, or foreign governments over the past 20 years, and he flat out wouldn't answer the question. <laughs> and all they had to do was say, no, they haven't. So in, in my way of thinking, they, they, and of course, this has been a god of thesis all this time, what they've done, because the United States legally cannot sell any of its gold unless we get an act of Congress. However, they can swap gold with other countries or other institutions and sell their gold to suppress the price, which we believe has been a mechanism of what the gold cartel has done. And he refused to answer the question. <laughs> and just by the nature, it's very telling. All he, all he had to say was, no, we have not. He wouldn't do that because he'd know he'd be perjuring himself. So there you go. There's William Dudley refusing to answer the question of whether or not we'd swap gold. Now, I believe we've done it, and I believe that it's probably almost all gone. Uh, we don't ever get any questions about swapping silver because there's no silver to swap. Governments don't have any. So the big question in light of all this especially these stock charts. Um, again, let me reiterate that uh, the two that I talked about, First Majestic and Pan American Silver, they've already made a, one is made 100% and the other is a 300% move. Uh, obviously, unless there's a serious pullback, it's too late to get on board. And I in no way can recommend doing that because we don't know if this is gonna turn down again and then they just go into bankruptcy. But looking at the charts, uh, silver is uh, not yet moving the way those stocks are. And the only other time we really saw a similar sort of pattern to that, uh, where the stocks really blasted off and then silver ultimately followed right here, is uh, when we had the massive rally to $50. So. Obama is clearly, in my mind, peddling fiction. They had to have an emergency meeting today, and I think the meeting was that you keep things going. Now, the other wild card here is that Donald Trump has uh, openly campaigned on the thesis that there is going to be a terrible recession. And uh, so if that happens between now and the election, uh, he will probably be a shoe in. So that may be the reason for the meeting and we'll talk to you next time.